name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends, as you are able. Thank you for praying with us this day, and thank you for biting into Matthew's scripture this morning. How exciting, how wonderful that we are reading in today's gospel. Matthew, at least, tells us how Peter, Andrew, James and John, they left everything immediately and followed Jesus. It's so interesting. <laughs> because that doesn't necessarily happen, I think, or it has, didn't happen in my life. And I invite you, when you are able, share with me if that happened to you. I grew up in the Anglican Church in South Africa. I've been wearing vestments since I was, I think, five years old. And I sang in my grandmother's choir. I sang with the great Barry Smith at St. George's Cathedral. The first song I sang was in Italian. I didn't even know what it was, but it was a good song. And, and then Christmas time, and, and so, how wonderful. I've grown up in the church. I've grown up around bishops and priests. And I have fought constantly not to follow Jesus, I think, in my own life. And so I was struck, really, hearing and reading out loud the scripture, how I admired how these entrepreneurs just dropped everything and followed Jesus, because that's not really what I experienced in my life. I experienced a constant pull, yes, but I realized how much I was always fighting that pull. How have you interacted with this core, sometimes, this tank of Jesus at your heart? And I, some, and I claim, or at least I will share sometimes that I did many things my grandmother invited me not to do before I finally heard God's voice of disapproval. What excites me though, this calling, this discovering, this being discovered by Jesus takes so many different forms and it is different and special for each of us in our own way. How wonderful that this calling is still happening regardless of the specifics of how it occurred. I even feel it in my life. The, the call is still tugging at the heartstrings, the whisper, the follow me. So Jesus, and following Jesus, I realize, is not something that happens in a vacuum. So how wonderful that on Sundays we gather in community as we explore using the framework of religion, the gift of spirituality, the, the gift of being reminded what we are made for. How the people and events of my life, of your life, and of the world uh, offers a, a foundation and a context for our faith in Jesus. I think this, and I realize I see how this has happened for Andrew, for Peter, for James, for John, for Mary Magdalene, for Esther, for Ruth, for me. And how throughout Matthew's Gospel, it not only details Jesus' life and mission, but, but how wonderfully Jesus, I think, molded his disciples. How wonderful that he reassures them. That wonderful story. There's so many people who showed up at service today. There's not going to be enough snacks at coffee hour, Lord. There's almost 5,000. There's not enough. What are we going to do? How wonderful that our Lord provides. The feeding of the 5,000, Peter's complaint that they left everything behind, the brothers of thunder, James and John, arguing with each other, I'm better than you, no, I was here first, no, I sit next to Jesus on his right hand, and then go to his mom and say, Mary, could you speak to 
your son in you. In each of these situations, that call, follow me. Each of these events, the formation in the lives of Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and that day when they encounter Jesus walking along the sands of the Sea of Galilee. Pivotal moments in their life. A pivotal moment to call to follow Jesus. Where do you see it in your life? How do we connect? I think that's the, the gift of the scripture today. That's the gift of, of the gospel. The two simple phrases that sum up everything, follow me. The opposites of the same coin, repent, pay attention. You're not getting it quite right, follow me. And again, repentance can, can I, I think, can assume the worst of the person who just spoke it. Sometimes or someone needs to repent of their, their wicked ways. For me, it is deeper than that. It is more than that. It is, it is a metamorphosis in outlook of life, a transformation, a, a way to see life with new eyes. And to do this, we, we shift our focus with fresh eyes so we can now see well. And so we, f we set fresh goals for ourselves. So how wonderful that the scripture happens for us at our, at our annual meeting when we, when we get to reflect on 2022 at the end of the service and, and see afresh this, this map, this road map of love that we share. I think there are many avenues and ways we come face to face with Jesus at pivotal moments in our lives. Sometimes they come out of the blue and catch us off guard. A Wednesday in Cape Town getting a phone call from this sixth bishop of Los Angeles, J. John Bruno, my, my spiritual father, who says, you should come to Los Angeles. Sometimes we, we feel overwhelmed by a sense of, of loss, and sadness. Sometimes they make us question our own beliefs and assumptions. I think we've all tasted that in our lives somewhere. The inability for me and my family to go to my grandfather's funeral in Johannesburg because of this germ that was lingering. Each of us have a story to share about a defining moment in our lives. Some of these moments are monumental, monumental while others are, are more subtle. Whatever the case may be, dear friend, listening online and, and sharing in this comfortable, warm pews here today, whatever the case may be, at each crossroads we, we get a new perspective on ourselves others and the world, we, we shift our thoughts and priorities, we, we inquire about new things, we, we take a new path, and we share in this together. I think this is, is, is what happened, and I understand better how this happened in the lives of, of, of all those who follow Jesus. In order to to challenge you, to challenge me, Jesus pauses. He says, follow me. And there's this, this holy breath. Follow me and see differently. Follow me in spite of what has happened, or but rather what, is, what challenges you might have faced. Their epiphany occurs when they were sailing the same boats and the same lake with the same nets as they had sailed the day before, the month before, the year before. 
Let us take a good look, perhaps, a hard look at our boats, our nets. Which way do you think you are going, we are going? What do you observe? Whatever the case, how wonderful that Jesus calls out to me, to you, to us. Follow me. Follow me and I will show you amounts of joy you could not even imagine. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you will make your hallelujah. With whatever loss you have, I will show you a community that will take your hand and walk with you. I will show you a friend that will hold you. Follow me, he says, as he stands on the shores of Main Beach Laguna. The choice is ours. What would you do with it?